Welcome back. More evidence of promising geothermal energy potential has been found in Singapore's northern region. Scientists drilling around 1.8 kilometers underground in Sembawang have found temperature gradients that are higher than global averages. A roughly two meter deep well produced heat energy at subsurface temperatures reaching up to 120 degrees Celsius. This is much higher than earlier data collected at another well at Admiral which recorded 70 degrees Celsius at one kilometer. The results were presented to international experts this week. And here to tell us more are two scientists from the Energy Research Institute at NTU. Professor Alexandro Romagnoli is Cluster Director, Multi-Energy Systems and Grids, and Dr. Jonathan Poe is a Research Fellow. Uh, welcome to the program, gentlemen. So first of all, um, uh, Professor Romagnoli, explain to us about this second study in Sembawang being more promising than the earlier one done in Admiralty. W were you surprised at all with the finding? Yeah, uh, in a way we have been uh, sur positively surprised by the funding. In fact, we uh, found out that the temperature nearby Semba Wang increases uh, unusually fast, mm -hmm. uh, almost uh, with a very large uh, temperature gradient. So just to give you a sense, uh, uh, like you mentioned, in uh, Semba Wang we could uh, find around 120 degrees Celsius at uh, 1.7 kilometers. And if you wanted to, with the temperature gradient, if you wanted to extrapolate uh, down to 5 kilometers, we could heat uh, roughly 200 to 250 degrees Celsius, that just to give you a, a sense, this is good enough to provide uh, and generate good electricity and potentially to supply mm -hmm. uh, cooling to data centers as well. Okay. So in that sense, can we confidently say that the deeper you go, the hotter it gets? Yeah, yeah. In fact, the, the, the challenge for it would be that to be able to tap into this deep geothermal heat. Uh -huh. And of course, the way we want to do it, we want to do it in a safely and in a cost effective manner. But indeed, the deeper we could go, the hotter we could get and the more energy we could potentially extract. Very fascinating. Uh, Dr. Po, let's bring you in here. Uh, where exactly in Sambawang did your team conduct this study? Was it anywhere near the Sambawang Hot Spring Park? And what was your role in this study? So the drilling site is located about 600, 700 meters away from Sambawang Hot Springs. It's along Gumbas Avenue. It's mm. just, we found a site that has met the requirements, is large enough, it has good road access, mm. and it, it is available for us to actually be there for about eight to nine months for continuous drilling. So my role is pretty much more on studying and looking at the rocks. So I handle the, the sampling of it to do laboratory measurements and also helping my other teammates to write draft present presentations, manuscripts, and the, all the other good stuff. Beyond the eight to nine months of drilling, how long did the whole study take for it, your team? The, the, the drilling actually took about nine months itself. But one thing in particular is it's more like getting hold of the temperature data. We need to wait very long periods of time to mm. make sure the temperature stabilizes at that. Mm. Then we can perform the temperature measurements. So all the temperature measurements and that we have published is the finalized version. After we're, to, we're talking about at least ten times of uh, measurements. So beyond the north, how widespread is this underground heat across Singapore? Could there be untapped geothermal potential elsewhere? Yes, um, I be, we believe it is. But at the moment, we can use this data as like a starting point mm -hmm. itself. But we are quite fairly confident that the northern part of Singapore, if we have extra data points, it will definitely build the temperature profile around Singapore much better. But there's a lot of more work that has to be done first. I have to ask, are there other locations that the team is looking at very quickly? I think one possible location, it would be Pulau Tokong because it has a hot spring there. One of our colleagues went to measure put a stick stuck a thermometer at the uh -huh. sands around the hot spring, it was about 90 degrees. Oh. So, but you try drilling in Pulau Tokong, that's another, another challenge altogether. Oh, very interesting. Okay, yeah. Professor Romano, uh, Nyoli, since most of the heat is stored in rock, right, does that really complicate how we harness it in the first place? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, as we know, this heat is not due to the presence of a volcanic uh, presence of volcano, mm. volcanic uh, activity. Uh, so, in order for us to extract the, that heat, we need to be able to drill deeper and then inject uh, fluids uh, to exchange the heat uh, with the heat source, which is basically the hot uh, hot rock. So, yeah. we are aware of uh, new developments happening worldwide in terms of the technology uh, um, um, development and. And uh, in fact, we see very good progress in, in this respect. And, uh, and uh, we think that the commercialization might not be too far away. Uh, it could be just a matter of a few years before we, are, we might be ready to tap into this heat at, at scale mm. like, that could be used for utilities. Well, what, what sort of technologies or methods can we possibly look at? Yeah, I mean, so there are mainly two types of extraction technologies. One is what we call an enhanced geothermal systems, which basically entails to fracture or to have some permeability in the rocks. Mm. Uh, the second method is what we call a AGS, Advanced Geothermal System, which is corresponds with a, you can imagine to drill uh, some pipes, some channels underground and to flow some water, some working fluid to bring this heat all the way upwards. So, I mean, both have pros and cons, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, and we see both developing pretty fast uh, and, and the both actually depending on the geological context and also maybe on the uh, region in which are going to be deployed, uh, might be viable solution for these deep geothermal resources. Mm, so many areas to explore. And we understand that the results of uh, these findings were presented to international experts uh, this week. So what has been their response to the findings so far, Dr. Poe? So far, they ha so, so far, it has been very positive. I had a visit. We actually visited uh, one of the comments received at another conference earlier this year. They say, wow, you have 120 degrees. We only managed okay. to get 90 degrees at three kilometers. But, but the, they are being used for that particular temperature was more like uh, district heating, mm. whereas, whereas the utilization for in Singapore and in Southeast Asia will be more, will have a much higher temperature threshold. Mm. So, I mean, it's due to our climate. We do not have seasonal changes, so we do need probably electricity, uh, drill deeper for electricity. Yeah. Speaking of Southeast Asia, we understand that NTU is also collaborating with regional partners like Indonesia, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So how does Singapore's research fit into the wider Southeast Asia's geothermal landscape? Mm, so the, the experience that we have gathered from this project has been pretty interesting and quite valuable. There are the, one of the papers that we have published is to literally assess the geothermal uh, development around Southeast Asia. And we find that quite a number of areas, say like Malaysia, uh, at the hot springs around it is pretty much underutilized. Mm. So um, we are currently in talks with certain stakeholders to maybe to help provide some expertise and insights into their geothermal development itself. But this is also open wide to other countries, not just within Southeast Asia. So I think that's what we can do. We think this is a very interesting finding. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming in to speak with us about this. Uh, that was uh, Professor Alexandra Romagnoli and Dr. Jonathan Poe from the Energy Research Institute at NTU.